all got a lot of work to do there. Uh, if neither the angels nor shaitan can see your heart and your thoughts, then how can some people see the condition of your thoughts? Well, there's what's called kishf, which is not, you know, that's something uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unveil to somebody, and that's a different thing. Allah can, can unveil to somebody. And oftentimes a kashf will occur and the person who the kashf is occurring to might not be aware that, but the person who's the other person will know that they're speaking to their heart. And so Allah has done that for you to learn something or benefit from it. So that, that's something, that's, that's from Allah. Uh, Uthman ben Fodio could smell sins. Because every sin has a particular scent. That's why angels hate stench. Right? And we know that the body, when it corrupts, it, it stinks. A healthy body smells good. The, the best smelling bodies are babies' bodies because they're sinless. Even their, the, the muconium stool doesn't smell bad. The stool of a newborn that's still drinking milk doesn't smell bad. There's, there's nothing to, to do that. No food, no... So, sins have a stench. And the angels can smell them. You know, in that way they know the sinfulness. They don't like to be uh, with sinful people. But Uthman Dan Fodi, that was one of his karamat, is that he could smell the stench of certain... And that's a kashf, you know, just... say Uthman, in the sound tradition on Uthman, a man walked in and he said, do people... The man had been looking at some woman lustfully and he came into the majlis and Uthman said do people come into my majlis their eyes are filled with fornication and the man said is this revelation after the prophet and he said have some guard yourself against the intuition of a, of a believer because they can look with the sight of God in other words God can illuminate something and that, that's different, that's a kashf and that does happen. In the light of what you said about the eye corruption of the heart, if one has a history of glancing at what he should not, what can he do to restore the heart and the inner eye? Well, I mean, that's what this book is really about. So we're going to be, that's, that's the topic of, uh, you know, I know somebody, one of the worst things that you can do, and this is for the males here, because uh, it's far more a male problem. But one of the worst things that you can do is view pornographic material. That will really, really affect you in a very, very negative way. And, and I met somebody who had become Muslim, and he had looked at a lot of material. Uh, and he was having a problem in his prayer because he would close his eyes and he just said all these images would just pop up. And that's one of the things about the prayer is that often, you know, if you do a, if, if, if you've done something sinful or something and you do the prayer, that it will come because that's a sign, you know, to you that, that your heart's, you know, you, you need to work on your heart. So polishing the heart is dhikr. One of the things that our ulama say is that Ibn, Ibn al-Banna mentions this uh, Surah Qusli that to treat the diseases of the heart is easier than treating the diseases of the body so Bushra you know that's good news for all of us that it's harder to cure a disease that you've acquired in your body than it is to cure a disease of the heart and diseases of the heart can be obliterated with Tawbah you know Allah can do that and you have to believe in the Qudra of Allah no matter what you've done it can be removed permanently, forever. You mentioned no one... Okay, so I think that's, that's it. Is there any other... Uh, uh, if Shaitan does not know what you are, one is thinking, how does his waswasa so closely match what thoughts pass through your head? Well, I, waswasa is, there, there's different khawatir, and this is a science of distinguishing the thoughts. You have khawatir malakani, khawatir rabbani, malakani, shaitani, and nafsani. And each one of them has specific qualities. So the rabbani thoughts are pious, they're pure thoughts, and they usually compel you to, in fact, they're so powerful that you end up having to do a thing. Um, so a khatar rabbani comes and it will almost force you to do something and sometimes you might not even want to do it 
I, mean, I, I could give you an example in my life. <laughs> uh, then, uh, but it's always good to do it. Because the khatar rabbani is always good. But it might be hard on the nafs. And then you have the malakani, which is an angelic thought, which is also pure. And, uh, and um, it's not as powerful as the rabbani. So it will come, like it'll tell you to do something that's good, like give charity, but it won't, you won't feel compelled. It'll be like a, an impulse it comes into your heart. And then the nafsani and the shaitani are different. The, nafs, the, the shaitani is, the nafsani is compulsive. It's the same thoughts. You know, they're compulsive. The shaitani is different. Like he, he tries this, and if that doesn't work, he tries that, and if that doesn't work. So the nafsani is, and, and all of these khawatir can be purified and removed. But it takes a lot of practice. And this is not something that's exclusive to the Muslims, by the way. Um, monks do this work as well. Uh, Buddhists do this work. You know, Buddhists have, they have a whole science of getting rid of what they call monkey mind. Right? The Hindus also understand this. I mean, m many religious traditions understand that, that you know, because thoughts are generated and, and they just keep coming and flowing and, and some are positive, some are negative. But you can learn to enter into a state of pure reflection and that's tafakkur. And that's when mirat al-qalb, the, the mirror of the heart becomes uh, clear. And, and, and that's what... Um, so the inner eye is it, it can see because you've been polishing you know, like the cataract removal of the eye that's what needs to be done with the inner eye because or it's got too much pressure you know what they you know what they use for uh, intraocular pressure in ophthalmology Ahmed Shunt that's what it's called in western medicine is there any ophthalmologist here do any of the doctors, do you know about Ahmed Shunt? You ask any ophthalmologist in the West to relieve the pressure of the, of the intraocular pressure, the shunt that they use is called Ahmed's shunt. <laughs> it was invented by a doctor named Ahmed. <laughs> they, they didn't name it after the Prophet, but Allah did. 